Hello, everyone, and welcome to a, an interview style roundtable discussion on Matt Loves Cameras. And today we have uh, three esteemed gentlemen joining me. And I've chosen, the, I've handpicked these gentlemen, handpicked them because not only are they, uh, you know, well known photographers and, and very talented photographers at that, but they are also uh, very talented artists. And I'm sure they're probably going to tell you that they're not, but uh, they, they, the, the evidence is quite clearly to the contrary. Uh, they, they're, they're definitely uh, very talented artists. And so I guess this discussion today is really about the intersection of art and photography. And, you know, the, the subtitle for this episode is Three Mats, One Willie. And so we're going to introduce ourselves. And if you want to tell us a little bit about yourselves, everyone, well, not everyone, but some people already know who I am. Uh, so uh, who, who would like to introduce themselves first? Matt well, Jones that, in Thailand. Thanks, 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 yeah. thanks not. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm Matt Jones in Thailand. Uh from Australia originally. So that's, I guess, how I got roped into this gang. Excellent. <laughs> and we can see some of your beautiful artwork there in the in the, in the background behind you, which is fantastic. Great. Excellent. It's, it's a virtual screen. It's not, it's not real. <laughs> and next up, uh, let's go to Bill. Uh, Bill too, uh, the one Willie from uh, Sydney, uh, mostly photography, but this year have started picking up the pencil and the uh, paintbrush a little bit. With, with excellent results, as, as I can attest from your, your Instagram and Facebook. Now, what, what's this camera though on, on, the, on the shirt here, Bill? Oh, this is, um, this is uh, a, a plug for my uh, uh, fellow, uh, one of the three mats. Um, it's the... Um, Minolta like a CL that uh, you can buy from a certain shop run by a certain Matt. Excellent. And uh, that certain Matt, would you like to, to finish up and tell us a bit about yourself and your shop? Uh, yeah, that's, my, that's actually your camera bill on that T-shirt. That's hilarious. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm Matthew. I'm from Melbourne, from originally from New Zealand. And yes, I am. A, I like to draw and take pictures. But not at the same time. No, that would be, you need some extra hands for that. Unless I'm drawing pictures I've already taken, which is most of the time. Yeah. Hmm. Excellent. So uh, great. So what we'll do, we'll do first is we'll sort of, I'll, I've got some questions here, uh, three or four questions, and we'll just sort of go around and and you can sort of talk at, at will and have a bit of discussion uh, around each one. So the, the first question for me was uh, as someone who basically only picked up a camera because I like traveling, it was sort of like an accidental thing, but I'm, I'm sort of keen to know from you all, which came first, art or photography? You're going to have to pick someone to talk first. Let's go you then first. Matthew. Ah, damn it. Um, that's a, that's, well, I mean, how far back do you want to go? Like, oh, all the way. All the, well, not, not previous lives, obviously, <laughs> just this life. Yeah, just this life. Um, I mean, it was art because, you know, like drawing and stuff as a kid. And then, you know, photography came later. I mean, seri you know, serious photography, which isn't serious. Um, but yeah, no, definitely art first used to always be drawing and doodling and stuff while watching TV. That was, you know, we didn't have the internet in the nineties. So we had to, you know, pretend we were using our iPads because we didn't have them. Um, so yeah, definitely art came first, but not as an art form. Photography was the first like creative outlet in a way, like, mm -hmm. Yeah, I guess that's the best way to put it. And did as you picked up a camera and got more interested in photography, did you keep on that that sort of focus on art as well, or did that sort of wane no. over the years? Or no, that that definitely went on the back seat during photography. Um, you know, it was just it was probably five or six years ago where I just started like doodling and stuff at work again, sketching and seeing things and going, oh, I'd like to draw that. And then, you know, we were on holiday once and my partner has got, I'm, I'm in the art supply room right now. There's a there's a, a large pencil there, as you may have noticed. Um, but I'm surrounded by art supplies. And one day, we're, yeah, like I said, we're going on holiday and I just said, oh, I wouldn't mind some watercolours. And uh, she grabbed them. 
and I grabbed a, a pad and took them away and I was just sitting, I was actually in um, Eden in the south coast of New South Wales and I just did a little like painterly sketch of the water there and she wanted to see what I was doing and I showed her and she's like, oh, piss off. Like, <laughs> it was good. Is piss off, is piss off allowed? <laughs> yeah, just. Okay. Just because it was because it was um, good. Yeah, no, well, no, it wasn't good, but it was. It wasn't like I wasn't just like stick you know, figures. Throwing, a, yeah, yeah, stick yeah. figures with a top hat and a cat yeah. with paws. <laughs> yeah, and then basically a year later, I just sort of it, it became like a it's a holiday thing for me. Like, yeah, it's not a thing I do at home generally. Hmm. Um, I did draw during lockdowns and stuff like that. There were a few drawing activities that I did for the sake of my sanity. Yeah. Um, but now just, yeah. just touching on that, when you're saying going on holiday, it's a holiday thing. Mm -hmm. So I know you recently went to Tasmania and you did these yeah. on Instagram. You had these beautiful, ah, oh, these beautiful sketchbook things, which, uh, were just amazing. Now yeah. from memory, I could be wrong here, but were they mm -hmm. in like a panoramic kind of format, these sketches? Uh, one of them was that okay, one, one of them was. okay i was gonna say um, is that because you're known as, as as you know the ex-pan man and and these are kind yeah. of panoramic shape does that does that desire uh, to draw in that ratio come from the ex-pan or no it's just what the it's just the, the, the notebook <laughs> yeah. drawing you know, to fit the page you know like if that if it was square i'd probably be drawing square but i yeah like i don't know how to fill the page as yeah. well so and i like a lot of white space with what i do i like negative space just like yeah. a bit more i don't know stylized or something you know. but yeah and, but it's funny that photography has become basically a holiday activity as well so mm. uh yeah I've got, I've got to come up with a new hobby to do at home and see well there you go we'll, we'll leave <laughs> you on that particular comment and we'll we'll go to to bill bill tell us about uh, art and photography and, and when you all picked it up and, and, and your life story, Bill? I, I'm not sure that I do art in the in the sense that it's kind of meant for anything great or carries meaning or it's like, you know, a philosophy. I I, I do photography to, to try and make pretty pictures and, uh, and, and uh, quite a lot for the challenge. Mm. So just to see if I can do it. Um, I, I've been uh loving photography for years and years and years i i bought a photo book um must have been in at the end of high school uh um by art wolf called light on the land it was uh um landscape photography book all all with film of course because i was in the 90s uh and and just used to look at the pictures, you know, every month. I'd, I'd take the book out, study the pictures and go, oh, you know, wouldn't it be wonderful if I could take photos like this? Of course, I never could because the, the opportunities weren't quite there and I didn't have any technical skills and knowledge. Um, but but love photography for the, for the um, prospect of being able to recreate sort of similar images. Um, so I always took photos, but never, never anything to write home about. Um, went to digital, of course, in the 2000s, or about 2004, I think, when the first kind of SLR came out. Um, had, a, had a cousin who went, um, have you heard of Lomography? So mm. I flirted with the Holger uh, uh, about 2010, and then... Um, ironically um actually started to uh study a little like not formally study but but actually try to get some skills in terms of um post-processing and stuff um in the in the mid um uh 2015 2016 and started going oh, i've got to do better with photography it just wasn't heading anywhere and listened to a couple of podcasts where they went have you considered going back to film that helped that helped my sort of digital um, photography and went, oh, okay, well, that sounds interesting. Went back to film and then hit that in a really, really big way and and um, uh, have been pretty keen on film photography, but never stopped using digital since about 2017, hmm. basically. Um, never could draw. Never was, was, uh, was really, really uh, well, I still think I'm bad at drawing, but I was really bad at, at, 
uh, drawing, sketching. Ne never tried any of that um, actually until this year. Um, part, part of it was I uh, migrated out of um, Twitter into Mastodon and I joined a server called mastodon.art um, and they had a they have a number of sort of um, social art challenges. So the, hmm. the Mastodon's it's kind of kind of like Twitter, but it's kind of run individually by um, by uh, uh, different groups of people, and they sort of federate together to to create the wider sort of social media. But Mastodon art in particular um, had an art focus, and they would throw up images and say, "Look, just use those as an art prompt and see what you can do with it." And sometimes I'd have a go and. Um, at drawing it, most of it was pretty crap, but that kind of started things. And then uh, it, Matt Jones um, would would go, "Oh, that'd be a good painting. Let let's have a go at painting that." And I think it was the Matt. I think it was the Manly photos. Um, oh. Kind of first half of this year. Um, I, don't, I don't think I speak like that though. <laughs> But you went, let's uh you should let's have a go at painting vats. And so I drew it, he painted it. Um and and that I think started things going because it didn't, I mean, it wasn't great, but it wasn't as hopeless as it usually is. And and then uh I picked up a pencil while I was at a conference um overseas and just started doing cartoons of the speakers in between writing notes and they didn't look horrendous and I went okay let, let me give this more of a go um read that, that book you know how to draw in 30 days um which is um pretty basic but it gives it gives you a little bit of confidence in terms of drawing and, and shapes and shading and, and half read another book on sketching and then that just got me going and then was heavily influenced by um, Mr. Photo Dudens with his watercolours on holiday uh, and decided that I would uh, fanboy when I went on the recent trip to Japan, which again followed in footsteps of MLC. Yes, so you, you recently went to, I, I actually remember the, the conference sketches that you, you put up there. Uh, I think you were in the Netherlands, weren't you? Remember, was that right? Yeah. That's and right. Then, yeah. And then recently uh, I was in Japan and then you were in Japan a couple of weeks later. And then like it's almost daily, you, I knew that you'd only started this year and you, you, you've actually got the same book as me, How to Draw in 30 Days. Yours is obviously, you've completed yours, challenge accepted, done. Mine is still um, pretty much unopened <laughs> here in the shelf behind me. I'm right next to my gouache set, which only saw one outing. I've got to get back into that. Um, but I, I've been quite astonished that about what the things that you're drawing because I, I i mean obviously um matt jones and matthew that i i sort of thought of them as as doing art for a lot longer like i thought photo dudens i thought you've been doing art for more than five or six years uh, but their art is you know is, is amazing and but then when i saw yours and you just picked up a pencil or a brush this year I was like, holy smokes, man, I got, I got to get into this because, uh, and this is part of what this podcast is about. It's not just talking about the art, art you know, the intersection of art and photography uh, for the viewers. It's also for my benefit, because I'm really interested in, in all of you and how you've, you've got to, to where you are. Um, and, and the ones you did in Japan, Bill, were, were quite amazing. Like just uh, all the beautiful little drawings. And even, what was that one in the, like, there's an onsen bath. What was, who was in there again? There was... It was like a hot bath. There were, there were the king mushrooms. In That's the right. <laughs> <laughs> so they're like not just drawing stuff. Like there's some real creativity in there. Like mushrooms enjoying, you know, a Japanese hot spring. Um, so yeah, I've I've been uh, really enjoying, uh, you know, following your your journey. Now you you have mentioned uh, the influence of of Mr. Matt Jones. So so Matt, would you like to tell us about your your creative journey? Okay. Interesting that that conference that Bill was at was in Amsterdam too, just saying. <laughs> um, well, well, I was a bit, I was, a, you know, everyone starts off drawing as a kid and I was a bit snobby. Like I was one of those guys that when my, my friends were, they had uh, SLRs, you know, obviously before digital and, and then some of them even went and did courses on learning the exposure triangle and all that sort of stuff and, and how to take better pictures. And I was always just, you're pushing a button. Where's the art in that? You know, I was one of those. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I did do photography at high school. We had a darkroom. Mm. And I think for me, it's always been about putting stuff on the wall. So not surprising. And uh, so 
the, the reason that I want to capture any kind of image is just to hang it on the wall, just to, to have art on the wall, I guess. So for when I was at high school and we had access to, you know, an enlarger and, and I could take photos and, and print on the enlarger and even built a little toilet roll pinhole camera with a zoom lens from the glad wrap roll and all that sort of stuff. And, and when I could print, it was okay. But then when, when I left high school and couldn't print anymore, um, then it, it sort of, uh, I went back to painting again because even perhaps back then, I don't even remember if, I don't think you had printers back then, even there's probably, I don't know, or even if you did, they weren't very good. Well, it's taken almost until just a few years ago for printers to print something out cheaply that will last a long time, yeah? Mm -hmm. So it's always been about that for me. So, I, you know, you would think... I'm, you know, in my fifties now, and if I started painting in my in in my teens, that I'd be much better than I am. But I'm not. <laughs> but uh, no, yeah, I, th I think that, the evidence is behind us. You've you got some beautiful images there behind you of all different sort of styles as well. Yeah, well, I said to Bill, I said I think this year I've caught up to where I was in my twenties again. <laughs> so I don't know. It's not really like riding a bike, I don't think. But so. And the only reason that I had a digital camera was so that I could take pictures of the um, paintings that I did just so I could store them because, you know, you do you do paintings and you do big paintings and, and I've moved around an awful lot with, with my life for work and things and you can't take them with you. So mm. just to digitise them after you painted them was good. Um, and then you have to start again, make all your wall art for, for your new location wherever you are. Um, so I never had... Uh, digital SLR ever. I just had sort of digital point and shoots that were good enough to sort of scan the picture because a flatbed scanner obviously is too small to, to digitise it. And then when film had the resurgence and then I had a bigger house here in Thailand where I could build a dark room, I thought, whoa, they sell photo paper and made, you know, I could do this. So that's when I got into film photography and started printing 20 by... 24 inch, you know, wow. all hanging silver gelatin prints that last forever. Um, there's a couple behind, but only the little ones, the big ones are downstairs. So I, I went headlong into that for quite a few years, met all of you retrobates. <laughs> and then um, I don't know, I don't know what happened, whether the stress of work combined with too much time in the dark room and and these you know the giant 20 by 24 inch prints and you've got huge trays of chemicals and you're leaning over and your face is in them and they're they're really hard to work with and i developed sort of like an allergy to the fixer and it it made me pretty crook and so i had to stop and um it's like oh bugger you know i've done all this work and i've got these great prints and now what am i going to do so I worked out that um, digital print, digital drawing was a thing. And so I got a little like bamboo like um, digital pad and then started using Critter, a free program. And then uh, these two were ahead of me because they were, they'd been using the digital, but then they'd moved to the analog, you know, real brushes and paint and stuff. And I felt like, oh, I'm being left behind a bit here. I need to pull the paints back out so that's what i've done this year pull the paints back out awesome and so just, just behind you there um i actually recognize quite a few of those paintings so on the top left there they are photos that bill took is that right <laughs> yeah like that's definitely a picture that bill took that's a definitely one that out the shinkansen yeah um, yeah. I, I recognize the loaves and fishes there, the bottom left. That's oh, a photo. Didn't I took, you take that. You I took, took that, that one. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I took that one. I don't so, credit anyone. <laughs> no, no I'm, not, I'm not looking for credit. I'm just, I'm just, I'm really interested. So these, these are not only just paintings out of your imagination or photos, but these are, these are things that like we've just shared in, in our group chat, uh, in the pixels and grain group chat. So Bill shared his view out of his hotel window, which you can see top row, third from the left. I shared a picture of some, some fishes and leaves, which you've, you've then gone away and you, you pretty you pretty much did these at lightning speed like it wasn't like six weeks before you showed us like i think it might have even been the same day or the next day yeah i i try if if i'm doing this i try and get it done in a day because you can you can lose a bit of 
interest. But I think also there's a when when you when you're painting, there's no back button, and you never know how far you're supposed to go. So there's a real possibility that you can you can work a painting to death. And mm. so sort of trying to do it in a day, I think helps with that as well. Awesome. So would you like to talk us through now? We'll go back. We'll start with you, Matt, and then we'll go back through the, the crowd. So would you like to, to talk us through, you know, two or three pieces of, of art that uh, you're particularly proud of? Well, that this this is the best. Well, I'll take it off. This is the best photograph I've ever taken, but this isn't the photograph. This is a painting of the photograph. Beautiful. Um, I thought that was a digital background. <laughs> <laughs> did you really <laughs> he said it was yeah he was I believed joking. him <laughs> i believed him nah so that <laughs> that's like a painting of an infrared uh print or well, you know photo that i printed out um and it's a bus stop the bus stops up here look a bit bit weird wow. that's probably the best one and you're never quite sure how things are going to turn out but and and i've done many versions of this in photographs and in painting and digital painting and, and you know, this is an analog painting but I think this turned out to be the best one so um I'm, I yeah I, I I guess you that's what you do you just kind of keep well I do keep working on them keep reproducing them keep doing them again and again until you get get it right because there's no back button so if you're doing it digitally and you go too far or you've messed up you've gone the wrong direction you just back 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 and then you <laughs> just keep going but here you sort of got to commit and then you think, oh, is that, I should have made a turn there, you know. I should have I should have done this. I shouldn't have done that. This one here too, this has been worked quite a few times uh, digitally before I, I got what I liked um, analog. You know, this is a, there's a painting again. And this is just the cow sheds down the end of our road here. Amazing. And I don't know, kind of Gibney clouds, perhaps, and and you know, a lot of rusty corrugated iron. They they probably it does look better from a distance, <laughs> as they all do. The the problem with the problem with scanning these and sharing them online is they look heaps better in real. The the, the painted ones look much better in real life, and the digital paintings look way better when you share them online, and mm. they look less better. When you print them out, that's a digital painting printed out, and you know it looks kind of so-so on the wall, but in the Instagram, it looks really good. One of one of the reasons is, and because this is video, it's probably not going to do it. But you kind of you see the reflections, and because the paint has sort of brush strokes and marks and things, when you scan it, it's really hard to get rid of them. Mm. And they show up, and then the little reflections and highlights and gradients of light, they they're in, captured in that still image. And you look at it, and you think that's how the, the artist wanted it to look. But why has he done that? Why has it got these streaky bits? Well, they're not there because when you're looking at it in real life, or mm. perhaps on a video, your brain sees those little streaky bits, and it just deletes them because it says, "I know that they're not there because they're moving around," you know. Mm. And I, my brain's putting together that image, so. Yeah, sharing these things online is not as satisfying as as putting them on a wall and, you know, nobody, almost nobody sees them. It's a bit interesting, like it, with photography, you know, if you take an image which isn't perhaps that good a quality, it can look really amazing on Instagram. And, and and the other way around is if you take an incredible picture with, you know, heaps of detail, you put it on Instagram, it can look not as good. So, yeah, it looks, sounds like there is a bit of a, a, bit of a similar thing with art there in, in terms of that um so that that's amazing um what just tell us about that that one the colorful one behind you with the two windows and is that a cactus i'm, I'm dreading to ask oh ah, that yeah is. that's uh, i don't know if any of you guys watched that andrew and danae they used to do the fuji um yeah. and he, he did a lot of, of film reviews like really specific he test and torture film and, and i liked all the scientific side of it and he's um he's doing this job for a client in the desert and his last video, he was showing this scene and he's like, I've, I've been commissioned to do this, but I don't know what to do in this scene. Um, so any suggestions, welcome. So I painted this scene oh, wow. and said, why don't you do something like this? 
And he never got back to me, so he didn't think it was very good anyway. But... <laughs> <laughs> must, must have got missed in the mailbox there somewhere. Yeah, but it was in two panels because he had to have two, like a, what do you call it, a, a diptych. Yep. Excellent. Brilliant. Okay, Bill, it's up to you. Let's show us show us two or three of your, your favourites. Can I, can I see if I can share screen? Sure. I've never done that on Zoom, but please, please do. Oof. Modern technology here. You've shared photo dudens on the screen. <laughs> <laughs> I can't do it. I'll, 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 I'll see how I can. So when I went to, to Japan, I, I completely copied, I plagiarized Mr. Photo Dudens and, and got a little world color book. Uh, I'll just see if I. Okay. So there is um, this image. If, if you go to Takeyama, and then you go to Shirakawa Go. They have got um, decorations on their uh, windows and walls, which look a little bit like tomatoes. I never quite worked out what they are, but they're kind of red berry fruit that they they hang um, on their walls. And um, I, I do uh, what what I do is I, I don't sketch on on site. I'll take a photo of something that looks interesting. It looks awful as a photo because. Um, uh the, the light and the context and everything's all wrong but I, I like the subject and then i'll go back later and 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 use that as my prompt for for drawing or, or sketching either you know analog or digital and i i like i like i like this one because it was the first time i created something that kind of was realistic most of my well almost my entire repertoire is cartoon like um, which I'm happy with because it's better than what I used to be able to do. But this is kind of which is kind of like lot much more realistic. And it was using watercolor pencils uh, and and a paintbrush, and I, I I liked it because it was something I could never do before. Um, I think. Um, so so were you going back to the hotel after taking the the sort the reference photo? Were you then going back that night, uh, getting your pencils out and and going for it? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Uh, maybe with uh, so met Mr. Jones indicating a beverage there. Yes, we may may have involved <laughs> a beverage, but the yep. uh, in Japan as far that's as far as it went. Um, uh, yes, yeah, so, so I'll do it that night, but might might not be that night. Might be a couple of nights um, away. Uh, and I might I might miss a night, so it wouldn't be necessarily that day's kind of images or things I'd seen. That, that sometimes the images have to stew a little bit before um, I'm kind of ready to, to tackle it. And sometimes I do two or three in the in the evening. It's only a small. I mean, it's it's a really small watercolor book, which I think was helpful. So I couldn't I couldn't do grand uh, images. It had to be a vignette of something, and I think that was very helpful. For me to sort of concentrate my uh, my mind on something that was within my capabilities um, to do, um, uh, and when I was in Japan, I just got twelve watercolor pencils. Basically, it was just um, kind of a Japanese souvenir. They were Japanese made watercolor pencils. I only got twelve colors in them. Again, a limited palette, but it was, you know what I needed to to use to make things a little bit easier, um, I guess. Um, and, and then when I was in Takeyama, I don't know if you went to that med, that museum, that magistrate's house, uh, that it was at near one of the morning markets and, and yet you had to pay to go in, but you did this circuitous course around quite a small building, but it was... It was no, I didn't go there. I, I actually missed... Um... We, Bill and I were in Takayama probably three weeks apart and uh, I stayed three nights. I could have stayed another three nights easy because there was at least two mu two or three museums I missed. And I, I didn't go to Shirakawa go either. Um, but no, what, what was uh, special about that small museum? Um, it had, it had uh, uh, a one particular, um, had one particular uh, uh, display, which was calligraphy, Japanese, Chinese calligraphy. Wow. And a sketch of Mount Fuji, which was simply just one brush stroke. It was a single brush stroke, uh -huh. but you knew you knew it was Mount Fuji. Like it was unmistakable, and it was the essence of the mountain with a single brush stroke. 
And um, I went, that's really inspiring. I can do mm. that crap. <laughs> <laughs> I can do I mean, I can do. Of course, I couldn't. It was kind. You know, it was a master uh, painter who, who, who did that. I don't know if he was the first or she was the first to do it, but um, everything else after that's you know, rehashing the same plot. But I decided to rehash the, the same plot by, um, by, um, by uh, simplifying what I was simplifying what I was doing. Uh, I don't think I've got the notebook. I have an idea. So I was just trying. I was just trying to simplify what I was doing by uh, using few lines and and just the paintbrush. And uh, went to the fish markets in Nagoya and uh, scribbled out a squid, emulating sort of um, uh, Chinese or or Korean or Japanese um, uh, brushing paintings by by having as few lines as possible, um, but still conveying kind of the image and, mm-hmm. and you very limited palette of um colors i but that that fish market you you i remember only a couple of weeks ago now you did a you posted a whole series of of fish pictures which were, were really cool yeah uh, so this is this is in color um and again just watercolor pencil um and uh a little tuna or bonito or something um and um again like really simple lines really simple colors um, one of the one of the things that I found um, quite a nice exercise I wasn't terribly successful at is looking at the image and seeing if I could kind of distill it into as few lines as possible and not make it too cartoonish. It's still quite cartoonish um, if you're an art artist or a painter or a drawer, but um, not as cartoonish as what I usually produce and, and still looks kind of half decent. So that was a that was a nice challenge. Um, and I, I do use Pro, Procreate, which is a uh, app for iPad, uh, which I understand was developed in in Tassie. Mm. Um, I do use that, and and I've found with um, doing pencil and brushes and stuff, it's actually helped my digital painting. It's kind of like um, and a lot of photography helping digital and the other way around. So it's kind of helped me with that. So since I've been back home i've i've done a few sketches or paintings with um procreate and and having sim- tried to simplify how i do things with with just a brush um and very few watercolors i um i've i've done the same with procreate now and and created some stuff that i've been more pleased with um and and tried some challenges like um you know trying to create raindrops on a pond and that sort of stuff so um, you know, part part of doing the arts, not because I produce nice stuff, I still don't think I do, but it's like the photography is a challenge to see if I can do something mm. where I couldn't do it before. And how, as someone who's only picked up, you know, a pencil this year, how, how does the buzz, how's the buzz different from say taking, you know, a banging photo versus producing these, these beautiful sketches of fish or squid or what is there, is it a more of a buzz because you've only just started it or? Yeah, I think I think it is. I mean, this is from someone who literally could not draw a single thing uh, at the beginning of the year to producing stuff that almost looks like what it's meant to look like now. So um, it's a it's a it's an incredible it's an incredible buzz. I, I don't think I ever had the ambition to be a drawer or a painter or anything like that because I just had so few skills that it was just not something kind of um I, I just didn't see it as realistic ambition basically and and my experience this year part, part of it is um you can develop some of those skills you look know, like, you know the good artists obviously are talented to begin with but to do something basic just practice is uh, enough to get you started and, and and on the pathway, and I I I kind of knew that was true, but I kind of dismissed it as being again something that wasn't something I would achieve by practice until I actually had a go at it and 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 found that my skills had started to develop. I thought, yes, okay, that's obviously real. I mean, everybody who's done it and gone through the process knows that, but until you experience it for yourself, it's really hard to, to validate it. Sure. So, I'm, I'm, so, sorry. You go. 
<laughs> no, that's it. But okay. I, very little else to say, having, <laughs> having very little else. I was just going to say, um, after after hearing about your journey this year, you know, I've got that book, How to Draw in 30 Days over there, and I've got I've got loads of stuff. Some of mine, some of the stuff I've got is actually stuff from the kids, like how to draw cute animals, which they've outgrown. But, you know, we did a charity drive to the, the shops. I was like, I'm going to steal that book, How to draw, draw Cute Animals. I'm going to draw a cute rabbit or a cute sloth. So I, I have got these ambitions to try and uh, over, over the Christmas New Year break to sort of um, to start the How to Draw in 30 Days challenge um so photo dudens let's let's talk about you and, and sh let's show us a bit of show and tell from from melbourne um oh my god i've got that the the book that i did while i was away uh but like these were pictures i took on holiday wow. to new zealand last year that i've that i've drawn and then colored in basically with watercolors amazing um, the depth of field in that, that building was yeah amazing the depth of field was it out of focus no no just like you know like you've got the, the door and then how you've made the oh. like i don't know what the right word is but what, what's the right word with the doorway and shading like, yeah that's it that's it See okay. what I mean? i'm using shading. photography terms here the shading was really cool to, to depth, give it depth that. of shading depth of shading is uh yeah. is on point um, as they say is that all dry watercolor work or, or are you doing any of that wet it's all wet no, I mean the paper. <laughs> oh, no, no, it's dry. Oh, um, it's it's yeah, amazing. I haven't really, I haven't really tried that technique, like wetting the paper first and then adding the color later. I just like coloring in. Like drawing is stressful, and then I get to relax when I'm coloring in. That's <laughs> my thing. And then like that, uh, like that one there, I sketched that, like at that point where we were on that horrendous walk um and then painted it later over the top is that wine glass uh, bay is that i've never been yeah, to Tassie. yeah, yeah that's okay. it yeah it's wine I haven't glass been to Tassie, but i recognized it very good yeah and like you know like i mean that that was portion of a photo that i took in tasmania and then this one here we flew we flew past that in the car i saw the little wow. minion and i went back on um street view on google ah. and did a screenshot and, and drew it from that so um but like, like, like what bill was saying it's just a practice thing like i you know you just have to keep at it basically um you know push yourself like i a few months ago i taught myself morse code in an afternoon just for fun wow. um i couldn't tell you a single dot or a dash now but like i was gonna say can one... you tap out matt loves cameras and no i can't <laughs> um but uh you know like i i just saw this website and it was like yeah learn morse code in like an afternoon and i went okay all right here we go <laughs> and then by the end of it i was able to communicate with morse code um so you know our old brains aren't mm. finished yet you know just exercise them and push yourself and and you know you can do that creatively or intellectually or, or whatever you want to do um but yeah sure so yeah, yeah sorry yeah and i was going to say it, it, i can't paint at home because i get distracted there's too many things going on um you know there's the tv there's you know, computer games there's uh doom scrolling um uh, you know and when i'm on holiday i'm relaxed and i can just i've got my little i've got so many half like half used sketch pads because <laughs> i get one for a purpose and then i eh, i'm on a different tangent now um so i have to learn to like flip them over and start again from the back otherwise i'll just end up wasting money um, how do you go with other people watching you does that bother you at all uh not really i haven't no, I've got no issue. I mean, the only person who'd be watching me is my partner, and you know, but not a problem. I mean, I like I sketched that little that wine glass base scene at the top of that walk, and I don't think anyone was like cognitive after that <laughs> after that walk up the hill. I think everyone was too exhausted to care what I was doing. Um, but no, I don't have a problem with people watching. And I know, I'm not going to name names or anything, but I know other people who draw and I've said, look, we should go out drawing. Uh, and they're like, no, I can't do it because people might see me. And I'm like, that's weird. But 
you know, it's obviously a thing. Yeah, I don't like anyone watching. Like if my missus comes into the room, it's, it is off-putting. <laughs> well, you're covering over like, don't look. It's even when even if they say, oh, that looks good. You're like, yeah. I don't want to hear that looks good, all right? It doesn't <laughs> look good. You're just saying it. I'm not there yet. Stop looking. You want girl. honest critique only. <laughs> Descri- uh, like how we talked to uh, in high school, it was D. D I A J. Describe, analyze, interpret, judge. That's how you critique art. <laughs> Judgment. Learned something new at today. The end, at the end, you judge it. I've already talked about this next topic. I think people have already talked about it a little bit. But do we all want to sort of have a chat about how how drawing, how painting, how art affects uh, kind of uh, affects your photography, or how your photo- photography affects art? Is there anything else that we kind of missed in these discussions around? inspiration or or you know better skills or anything like that yeah i can i'll start with that one please do um uh, you know it's like the chicken and the egg like which one came first like for me like qpac in brisbane Mm. that i i fell in love with that building you know 20 plus years ago and i don't even know why i just always liked it it was before i had I was interested in art or photography and that has become like a little mecca for me. Um, I'm, I'm trying to get back on my tangent. Um, you know, like being a photographer, being able to take a picture of that building, I can appreciate it more. And like mm-hmm. learning a little bit about architects and architecture helped me appreciate it even more. And the art inside, like that's something to be appreciated as well. And like, I like taking photos of people in art galleries looking at art. And I also like looking at art myself. So it's like this whole, you know, what's that? A thing in a thing. The snake, the snake eating its own tail, you know, yeah. like, um, and, 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 you know, there's artists I like that I want to emulate in my photography. So like Edward Hopper and um, John Register, they do these like, really stylized you know with angled lighting and it's warm and you know like it's just nice to look at and like um jeffrey smart the melbourne artist he does like these really brightly lit scenes with stormy skies and you know like i didn't go out trying to emulate them but when people would point out that my photography looked similar to that then I became interested in that and, you know, it was just like, you know, just the snake kept eating its own tail. Like what, where did it, where did this begin and where's it going to end? No. So QPAC there, Queen, is Queen, mm. QPAC for people who don't know is the Queensland Performing Arts Centre. And how mm. would you describe the architecture? Is it brutalism? Brutalist? Yeah, brutalism. Yeah, no, it's, it's, very it's basic as brutal as box, it gets. Box yeah. kind of building. Is it, is it sandstone kind of colour, mm-hmm. I guess you'd call it? Yeah. Um, yeah. So that's a, a interesting uh, thing because we actually went there together. You didn't tell me about your obsession with it. There. We, I mean, we went there. You chose it, but you didn't tell me about yeah. your obsession with it. Oh no, I've been. Yeah. Don't talk about what happened there. <laughs> yeah, obviously, right. I had. You I don't had need to pink... bring it up every oh, time. Yes. About how I almost <laughs> dropped the eggs. No. Pad. But I, I, I had a pink camera. That actually, I don't know where the pink camera is. It's somewhere here. I had a pink. It's um... behind you. No, it's, it's. I think it's actually my toy camera is right oh, no, there. I, I had. It was a, a doing a, pink... a pantomime thing. Oh, okay. Sorry. Uh, I've, I had a pink ultra wide and slim clone that day. You did. Yeah, yeah. I remember that. Yeah. And uh, yeah, great little camera. Uh, yeah. So who, who would like to talk next? Bill? Oh, I'm done, you? by the way. Okay. You're done. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think, I don't think I've been doing this long enough to have, uh, have my view sort of my view on how they interact kind of concreted yet. And uh, one of, one of the questions you, I think you asked in the pre-chat was, um, uh, is it a zero-sum game, essentially? Like, how much time does each hobby kind of take up? Um, like, it kind of it kind of is a zero-sum game. Like, there's very, you know, work takes up so much time in your life and then the other things of doing life takes up so much time that there's there's only so much, like, time left for, for the hobbies. And, and what I found is it's either the painting drawing stuff for all the photography except when like with um mr joseph except when i'm on holidays where i can sort of kind of do both but otherwise it's kind of one or the other mm. 
Uh, I'm not sure yet how they, I'm not sure yet for how the two hobbies influence each other for me. Uh, I almost always draw stuff from a reference photo. I don't kind of, sometimes I'll try and copy it as closely as possible, but most of the time it's just kind of the inspiration where I get started. Um, so, uh, so a lot of the stuff that I do has a photographic origin, um, but often it's a photo that, you know, the conditions just weren't right or everything else in terms of what's in the photo is pretty horrible. There's just one element of it that I, I really want to draw um, or I, I want to draw it in the ideal, ideal conditions or I want to abstract it in some way. Cool. Um, but but it's kind of the photograph itself hasn't necessarily influenced influenced the um the the drawing the picture in kind of other ways necessarily, um, and and some of and some of the stuff particularly the digital paintings I've been doing have been scenes of um, where I've taken astro photographs and have kind of just made them a little bit cartoonish, um, not deliberately. That's just kind of how it turned out. Mr. Jones's output's been a lot better than mine, unfortunately, for that sort of thing. Uh, but um, so, so my drawings and and paintings and and stuff have been heavily influenced by photography, rather than the other way around. Mm. Yet, um, but I guess it's kind of an influence. But I, you know, you guys know I've been umming and ahhing about um, whether I was going to take a film camera to Japan, and having taken the Pen, you know the pencils and the paintbrush um, to to Japan and the film camera. It, it hasn't. Well, I'm in the process of developing my film and, and scanning this. I don't know what the output's like yet. I and mean, if they're amazing, I'll, I might take film again on another trip overseas. But I had so I did have so much fun with the pencils that I might just take a digital camera next time mm. for overseas travel and sort of use film at you know domestically in Australia but when I go overseas take a digital camera and just use that for the one output for creating photographs and also reference photos because right when we were in Japan I what I ended up doing was you know using the film camera and then go oh I need a reference photo for, you know pull out the iPhone and snap away that for a little while and oh why am I using the iPhone I got a film camera and then swap around which was a little which was a little bit cumbersome and it would be good just to have one camera that that did both jobs and maybe digitals what i'll be using for that next time if if i continue with the painting john yes i know all about the uh, the, the shuffle the backpack shuffle of having uh cameras or you, you had uh, you know pencils and cameras and stuff i i just have cameras of mine but um yeah it, it can be um such a you think oh, I want to take this and I want to take that. And sometimes you feel like, Oh man, I should have just taken one or two cameras, not six. Um, but uh, here's, here's a man who definitely would only take one camera at a time. Matt Jones, tell us, tell us about yours, how, how art has affected your photography or vice versa. Yeah. I think the photography's probably affected the art more because this time around with the painting, you know, I would never have done astro painting before and I would never have done infrared painting before had I not learnt these things with photography. Um, but the, And the other thing that photography has taught me is things that I didn't know before, like, you know, backgrounds lose contrast, um, the way light source hits, the way shadows work, the way um, highlights work. You know, this gets kind of an extreme example there. But before I got into photography, deeply, I wouldn't have understood, I didn't understand any of that. So photography's taught me an awful lot. And it's a bit of a, it's a, it's a, it's a real long sign curve, you know. So maybe in another 10 years, maybe this will drop out again and maybe I'll come back to photography and then that'll be heavily influenced, no doubt, by, by what I've learned with this stuff, maybe compositionally, I don't know. But one thing that that's, tricky that you don't think about with painting um, that's automatic with photography is mother nature does a lot of work for you with photography because the world is there and it's built and you, and you picture it. But then when you've got a blank canvas and you're starting and you just do something as simple as painting a blue sky and you think, now is it blue, darker at the top and lighter at the bottom or is it mm -hmm. lighter at the bottom and darker at the top? 
And it's like, well, maybe there's an answer, but then maybe Mother Nature swaps it too. So, you know, because some of these are one way and then mm. the other way, I think. I, I do, maybe all those examples are the same, but I definitely do have ones where it's flipped and it still works. Um, so, yeah, there's, there's, there's things, there's a lot to learn about. It's probably really valuable if you're going to do painting to have done photography first, I think. Hmm. So one thing that Bill has touched upon here, which is is a question from my little notes here for number four, is, you know, uh, with photography and art, does one come at the expense of the other? Or do you, you know, do you only have headspace for one at a time? Or can you do both? Or, you know, explain that to us. Uh, Photo dudes, you can you can kick us off with that one. Um, yeah, it's definitely a one at a time thing. Like, I am not a great multitasker. Like, even when I had a drone and I was trying to use that, I was trying to do, like, lateral photography and aerial. It, it didn't work. I had to do one or the other. My brain couldn't work both. And, uh, you know, when I did my little um, visual diary of Tasmania, it was, you know, like I really, like I did it at the end of the day. You know, mm. that was my end of day thing. You know, the photography had stopped. Um, you know, it was time to do the diary. And that included writing or scribbling or whatever you want to call it as well. Um, so, yeah, it's definitely one or the other for me. Like, yeah, I just think there's a separation and I don't know how to combine the two and I don't know if I want to know how to combine the two, you know, like, mm. uh, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a separate hobby. Yep. Um, and yeah, that's, that, cool. that's, that's my thought. Excellent. <laughs> about you, Matt? Yeah. It's, I don't think it's up to me. <laughs> it's like you wake up in the morning and you kind of, you're lying there in bed and you just you sort of half sleep and you don't have to get up yet. So you just, it's almost that daydreamy meditation time and you can slip back into sleep or you might not and and ideas come to you. Well, they do for me. That's, that's when I get most of my inspiration in the mornings. And if it tells me something, you know, if, if it comes up with an idea for a painting, then that's what I'll do. And that's what it has been doing this pretty much this whole year. But if it did come up with an idea, for um for, for a photograph, then then I'd then I'd follow it because if you don't follow those threads, those creative threads, you know you you don't know. I don't think we're in charge. Mm. <laughs> that's, that's actually a really good way of looking at it. Um, now for my final question for you all, we'll start with you, Matt. Again, um, you know, twenty twenty four. We're almost you know bringing twenty twenty three to a close. How do you see? You're not, not going to ask Bill that question. Oh, Bill, Bill already covered it. Bill was ahead oh, okay. of the game. All right, sorry. Bill, Bill read the pre the the, the pre show <laughs> notes, and what? Bill was on time for this recording. What? <laughs> so, do you, do you have anything more to add, Bill? Twenty twenty four. Okay, twenty twenty four. How do you see your your art, your photography? What kind of mix do you see? Tell tell us. I don't. Well, honestly, I don't know what I don't know what the mix is going to be like. I I um. I mean, we're all film photographers. That's kind of how we came to know each other in a non-biblical sense. Um, and I think that will continue. But um, I've always shot. I've always shot digital, so digital will be part of what I do. As I said, I'm not quite sure about when I travel next. Whether you know, film will come with me next time. It, you know, mind you, getting the film hand checked at the airports wasn't as a big a nightmare as I was suspecting as as you mm. guys who travelled before me you know, obviously found out. Um, but I think the, the painting and the drawing stuff at the moment is a shiny new thing. It's a shiny new toy. And and I I think that will continue. I've got so much to learn and I I'm inevitably going to hit the wall very shortly in terms because my you know my skills will hit the wall of where I can't go before very long um but i i i do at the moment enjoy the challenge of of um 
trying to produce stuff that I just couldn't do before. And that is exciting and it's and it's um it's lovely and, and it's entertaining and, and it does occupy me. And unlike unlike photography, um, you know, although there are distractions and stuff, you, you can do the paintings and drawings at home without having to um trudge out uh for me at, you know, in the middle of the night and, and find the right composition at the right time of year with you know, et cetera, et cetera. You can do it any time you like for painting and drawing. So that's a huge advantage of of being able to do it. So I, I inevitably I think that's going to continue. Um and for the, you know, we're all camera enthusiasts. Um, we know what gas is, and unfortunately, there is gas for for painting and drawing products as well. I mean, there's just so many bloody pencils and different types of paper, and they're so expensive uh, and they're so shiny. <laughs> I, I actually went. I think you know that I went to um, a couple of weeks before you did. I went to uh, in Ginza. There was a massive uh, stationery store, and I, I popped in there. I was running late for my train <clears throat> to the airport, but I popped in there. I thought I'll just have a look at what's there. And there was so thousands of products. I was like, uh, no, I walked out within two minutes. I thought, no, I've, I I can't, I can't even draw. There's nothing I can possibly buy in here. That's going to make me any better than the stuff at home. So I left with my, my tail between my legs. Um, but th that's excellent. What about you, Matt Jones? How do you see your 2024? Are you just gonna, you think you're definitely in a painting phase of, of, of life at the moment? Yeah, there's probably two paths that I, that I'll go and I'm not sure which one. One would be just to paint bigger. So like this size that I'm doing at the moment is convenient for the space and the desk and all that, but it's kind of smaller than what I can do with the enlarger. So I would like to do at least enlarger size, if not bigger, bigger canvases, but it's going to mean more space, easels, all that sort of stuff. So that's one thing maybe. The second thing, which perhaps is more likely, because I'm I'm a pretty good sketcher, but I'm terrible at that watercolor painting so if i could do what that guy does with the watercolor coloring in i'd be very happy so i wouldn't i'd really like to learn that coming up soon or at least you know sort of master that amazing and photo dudens how do you how do you see your 2024 um i don't know i don't have a crystal ball i'll take um, it as it comes take it as it comes but like photography you know, it'll, 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 you know, it'll just happen if it's going to happen. Um, I, I want to draw and paint more, um, but I want to do the exact opposite of what Matt Jones is doing. I want to go small, smaller. There's a, a movement of people who buy Altoid tins and they get little bits of canvas and put them in here and they fill this up with oil paint. And they do little oil paintings um, with Altoid tins, and I want to do that. What, what's Altoid? What is that? Yeah, it's uh, mints, American oh, mints. Oh, right. Okay, get you. I think I've actually heard of this. I think I actually saw someone on Instagram who was doing yeah. yeah, these perfect. Yeah, well, it's a it's a real thing. Like, you, don't, you don't have to eat the mints. You can just buy the tins, right? Oh, why not like, eat the mints? May as well. Oh, you know, get your money's worth. Come back with no teeth in the next version of this. Um, but, yeah, that, that, that's something that I've been wanting to do for a while um but oil's messy and you need to have um solvents with you which could be interesting um Trouble. but you know like watercolor's clean and you know all you need is water and a little bit of paper to block the the brush on or you know to get the excess paint off the paper um but yeah oil's smelly and and, and not as clean to, to work with. But, you know, that's something that I want to try. And I've just thought of one very final quick question for you all. Has, you know, like we've had a bit of a triple whammy recently with film. You know, the film has gone up a lot in, in price. Uh, availability has, has been an issue. And certainly if you travel, it's a lot trickier with airport checks and stuff. Have any of those factors influenced any of you to sort of get more into art because of, of, of the, you know, perceived or real issues with, with film the last two, three, four years. It's annoying um, for me because hmm. I, I bought, when I, I, I bought a lifetime supply of film and now I've stopped shooting it to a pretty large extent and I've got a hell of a lot of film. <laughs> Excellent. We know where to come to, to find some. <laughs> yeah. I did that in 2012 when Kodak said they weren't, 
they were going bankrupt or whatever. I think it was 2012, 14, maybe. I can't remember. Yeah, I spent like a thousand US dollars on portrait. <laughs> but got through it eventually. I think I used my last few rolls uh, two years ago. So yeah. it got me through. But um, yeah, I, yeah, look, it's definitely a thing in the back of your head when you're taking a picture and you go, all right, that's two dollars or that's a dollar fifty um but you know you gotta just uh, there's a thing my partner does when she wants to buy something expensive and she goes okay this is this costs costs x amount it's gonna last this long so therefore it's a per day mm. expense and you can do that for anything and it's the same with film as well you know like it's an enjoyment thing how long could I possibly enjoy the spending this money for how much enjoyment can I get out of it? And, you know, like photography is like what a five hundredth of a second times 24. So this, the process of taking them is a big amount of time, but the actual use is quite short. Um, and I think, you know, maybe art supplies, uh, better value for money they can stay with you a lot longer you don't have to worry about getting dirty looks at the airport um and you know i part of me up, up until the last minute when i was going to tasmania i was just going to take the gr and my art supplies the rico and then i thought oh no i have to take the expand now just because it's, you know, I'm tradition servant cursed. So I have to keep shooting with that thing at least until next year because it'll be my, it'll be our 20th anniversary, me and oh, the x next year. Amazing. Mm. Excellent. And a uh, final word from Bill. What was the question? The question was, <laughs> uh, I don't know. Now. Oh, Why are we here? Cost, the cost of film. Um, cost of film, film availability, um, issues with traveling with film. Have any of those been behind the, the push for you to pick up a pencil? Oh, no. Well, no. It, it was um, being in a social media environment where art was kind of, uh, non-photographic non art was was really prevalent um, and encouraged. And oh, what, what I didn't say about Matt, the Mastodon art, art prompts was um, it's in explicit that um, if you're really, really bad at art, don't worry about it. Just do it, post it. Um, and we'll support it. And that was really, really encouraging, um, as well as these guys, of, you know, when when we started um, chatting about uh, about painting and drawings rather than photography, that was also really encouraging. But I, I, I'm a little bit like um, these guys. I, I have a bit of a stash of film um, and I could shoot film for a little while before running it, quite a while before running out. Um, so that's not really the issue. But I was I was quite shocked at the price of film um you know looking looking to see if I should restock some stuff I was going oh my god it's gone up quite a lot <laughs> since I, I yeah. bought film last time um but I I do enjoy film photography so much that I will probably continue in some some way um shooting film for for some time um so really, it wasn't really that, but the I must say that the airport saga and you know CT scanners and stuff is, a, it, although all the film got hand checked without a hassle, it is a bit of a plava um, and a bit of an anxiety leading up to it. That um, that uh, I, I seriously considered not taking film to Japan, but it was Japan, and it's you know. I had to take film on this occasion, but I'm not quite sure how much longer I'll take film overseas for um, rather than just take a digital camera. Um, it's tricky, isn't it? Because I took 20 rolls on the two trips I did this year to Japan. And if the thing going through your mind is, okay, what if they get nuked by a CT scanner? That's, that's 20 rolls of film. That's a lot of money. And then you can't, you're taking film cameras and do you even bother shooting the film or not if you think they've been nuked and but anyway i i had hand checks as well so that was uh i had i, I led a a good um yeah life with the film <laughs> this year through airports um well gentlemen it's been a really fascinating conversation i won't um i won't test the friendship and keep you on uh, for another couple of hours i've really enjoyed the chat here it's been great 
And um, uh, thank you all. Do, does anyone want to <laughs> tell, you know, share any socials of where they can see your art or you're happy? No, Matt Jones is definitely not. I know. I'm going to, I'm going to turn this interview around onto you. Why, why are we here? What is your interest in all this? Well, I've always, I've never been very good at art and I, you know, at school I was never very uh, encouraged or anything, you know, and, you know, as a child, I could only draw stick figures and stuff like that. And, you know, I have been thinking, I think it's probably in, in, in part due to exposure to things that you guys have done. I know that, um, Matthew, I, I, about four years ago now, I shot an ice cream van on the Isle of Wight, uh, <laughs> and, and you turn it into a painting, like a sketch. And I was like, Oh my yeah. gosh, this is amazing. And it's almost mm -hmm. like, I almost thought to myself, gosh, you could, you could actually take a, a photo and get rid of all the things that annoy you about the photo. Like there might be a concrete garbage can or something. You can actually get rid of that with painting. And yeah. I'm, I'm sure it's a lot more, you know, hard and complex than that. But I was kind of interested by that. And then, you know, hearing about Bill's journey this year and seeing Matt, oh, Matt's, you know, um, you know, people posting up an image in, in an Instagram chat. And a couple of hours later, Matt Jones has got this, this painting. It, <laughs> it is quite fascinating. And I, I have bought, I've got my gouache, gouache set over there. Uh, I only tried that once, a bit of a disaster, but I've got, I, I am keen to sort of, yeah, to, to sort of do something different, I suppose, um, having done photography for 30 years um yeah i i am keen to to do something and, and 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 a lot of photographers do seem to have this intersection between art and photography so yeah all right you should gonna hold you, yeah you should do it and we're going to hold you accountable for it as right. well we'll be and we'll be there to in, uh push you along when you need it and inspire you when you need it Excellent. I appreciate that gentlemen. And, and you know what? I could turn this into a, a daily, a daily live stream. Matt's uh, learn, learn art in 30 days. No, that'll probably, <laughs> tank. I'll probably tank. Uh, but thank you again, gentlemen. I really appreciate it. And um, everyone cross fingers that this recorded. Otherwise uh, we'll start again in five minutes. <laughs> Thanks for having us. Thank you all. Thank you, Matt. Bye. -bye.